um, hope you had a good spring break, and now we're back. So this week we're doing a lab called Reactivity of Metals, and the concept for it is pretty simple. Uh, most metals will react with acid to form hydrogen gas and then the metal ion. So that's the reaction we're going to be doing today. Um, the hydrogen gas that's formed, we're going to be collecting it in a radiometer, which for us is a fancy term for an upside down burette. Uh, and then through a bunch of calculations, we're going to figure out how much hydrogen gas was produced and from there, how much um, of the metal will react with one mole of that acid over here. Make sense? All right, cool. So I'll go through this in a little more detail in a second, or like later, but the equation we're going to be using today is Dalton's law of partial pressures. So the total pressure is the sum of all the partial pressures, and then PV equals NRT, and the equivalent mass, and the way we're going to calculate that today is going to be the mass of the metal that is reacted, uh, divided by two times the moles of hydrogen gas formed. There's a two over here because hydrogen gas is H2, and the definition of equivalent mass, which is the answer we're looking for, is the amount of H plus that reacted. So there's two H pluses per H2. Any questions? All right, cool. So procedures over here, and I'm gonna briefly demonstrate um, in a second. So in previous labs, whenever you were told to weigh something, it always gives like a, an approximate mass that you need. Uh, a lot of you have asked me if it's a little off, that's okay. Usually it is, but today it's not. Make sure your metal is under 0.04 grams uh, because the way the reaction works Often if it's over 0.04 grams, you're going to end up having to do it again. So when massing at this time, please be careful. Okay, so the metal that we're using today is over here. You can all come and get one uh, when we start. Uh, some of them are cleaner than others. If you notice black on your metal, you should use the sandpaper over here to basically just scrape it off. Uh, it won't affect your re results that much, but your reaction will get done a lot quicker if your metal is clean. All right, so now to set up this udiometer thing. First, we're gonna be putting it right side up. Oh, sorry, this is a burette clamp. Please make sure you attach it through the middle and not through the side over here. It's a lot more stable when you attach it through the middle, just you screw it in. Uh, then we're gonna take burette and set it up as usual. And we do this because we wanna find the volume that's over here. Uh, we're going to eventually flip it upside down, so this is going to be on top, but there are no markings here, so we need to know the volume of this part. So the way you do that is pretty simple. Um, make sure it's closed, and just fill. I'm not going to do it because it takes a little time to get it exact, but fill it, and then fill it a little over what that line is and then just let enough water out that it reaches that 50 mark, and then put your graduated cylinder under it. Let all the water out into that, and then you know what your dead volume is. There's a place to write that down in your book, so please record that, you're gonna need, need it for calculations later. Uh, just the burette review, make, sh make sure you remember Parallel with the rest of the burette is open, and then horizontal, so perpendicular, is closed. Yes? Should it be 50? What do you mean? Like, should it be 50? No, it's from the beginning until the end. Oh, well, when you're reading a burette, like, one is up here and 50 is down here. So you're oh. looking for this volume. Oh. There's no markings here, so oh. that's why you put, you yeah. empty that water into your garden cylinder and record what, what you get in here. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right, cool. Um, Okay, so I'm not going to do this using the exact volumes, but that's a good point. Okay, after that, um, get your large beaker, fill it about halfway with water because eventually this will be upended in here. Um, then you're going to get HCl. So hydrochloric acid, as I'm sure you all know by now, is corrosive, so please be careful. It's over there, and you're going to get 5 mLs. I'm going to pretend that this is 5 mLs. It's not, but once you have those 5 mLs, 
put it into your burette. Again, make sure it's closed so you don't have it leaking everywhere. So when you're adding the HCL, don't add it like over here because if it spills, suddenly it's all over the hands and all the table. So try to keep it at waist length and then just carefully add that in. And then you're going to slowly fill the rest of it with water. Um, I say slowly because usually the rule in chemistry is you never add water to acid. But in this case, it can't be helped. We're going to do it. So just do it slowly and keep the burette at a 45 degree angle when pouring it because that will make it fall more gently. So just fill to the top. And I'm not using it right now, but you can use your funnel if you feel safe for doing that. Just make sure your funnel is clean. And then the order you did this one in doesn't really matter. You can do this before or after adding the acid. The metal can react again is in this little bead. You can come get it. You'll see instructions to roll it into a tight ball in the book. Don't actually do it that tightly. Just like fold it three times because um, you're going to need to react it. And the more surface area you have, the better. So to hold it in place, we're going to keep put it in a little mesh thing. So you don't like fold it over and over again to try to keep it really secure in there. Like you can just see, like you can't see the metal anymore. And then if you can't see it, the acid's gonna have trouble reaching it. Then you're gonna get a really slow reaction. So just put it in and then like fold it into a bundle. Make sure you can see the metal and then just tie it closed with the copper wire. Okay, once you have that, put that into the top of your burette like this. Um, you really want to only leave enough space so that you, can, you have room to put your plug in. Don't put it too far, too much farther down. Once it's in, uh, fill, you should probably just spray bottle, but I'm just going to use Fill it to the very top so that it's almost bubbling over. Can you hear me? Uh, when it comes, when it comes Once you have that, just cork it. This, this one's too far down. Don't keep it, don't put it that far down. Keep the metal pretty close to the top. Make sure that's tight, and then keep your finger over this, and then invert it in here. And we attach your burette. Make sure the connection between the cork and the burette stays underwater at all times. So once you invert it, the acid that was up here that you added first is going to start slowly going downwards. And once it reaches the metal, it's going to start reacting. You'll see a bunch of bubbles forming. Those bubbles will rise to the top. Make sure this is closed again. Once they reach the top, they'll get stuck here, and they'll start pushing water out and into the beaker. That's why you don't want this beaker too full, because then it could bubble over. Not bubble over. It'll overflow when this water goes into here. All right. Procedure makes sense? Cool. Again, again, I use water, but make sure you actually use acid when adding the five miles. All right. Um, cool. So then I'll just go quickly over the calculation, then we'll get started. So after your burette uniometer is finished bubbling, your water will say be around here. And you're gonna have to take two measurements. One is gonna be the distance between the water level and your beaker, and the water level that the water in the burette ends up at. Um, yeah. Okay. So those calculations. Uh, for Dalton's law, like I mentioned before, for us today, the total pressure is going to be barometric pressure. It's given to you 755.4 millimeters of mercury. Um, and that, the components of that are going to be the pressure of the hydrogen, which is what we want. The pressure of the water vapor. So if you took chem, remember that whenever you have gas over some kind of liquid, the water vapor contributes to the pressure of that gas, so that's what's here. You can find the pressure of the water vapor in table one, Just take temperature of the water, and then look it up in table one. And then there's the hydrostatic pressure. So the concept of hydrostatic, hopefully this looks familiar from chem, it's a diagram where you have a gas in a bowl, and then you have some liquid over here, and you're calculating the pressure of the gas, and it's open to the atmosphere, so you need to account for that pressure while calculating here. So it's the same thing here, except 
The open part is like the speaker, and then you want the gas that's in here. Uh, so to do that, it's steps H and I in your book. Uh, if you have questions, please ask me. It's just this equation and uh, density. I think it's given in the book too. It's 13 of mercury is 13.6 grams per milliliter. This equation is to is to convert um, your units from water to mercury because all of the other equations that you do use milliliters of mercury and not milliliters of water. All right. Any questions? So uh, once you've calculated this pressure of the hydrogen, you then plug it into PV equals nRT. Uh, that's the P. The V, you're going to calculate from your Burette readings. So um, remember that the Burette is labeled with 1 at the top and 50 at the bottom. So to get your actual volume of gas, you're going to be doing 50 minus whatever reading you read at the end minus that depth space that you calculated in your little cylinder way in the beginning. That's going to be your volume. You're looking for the moles. R is over here. Again, note the units. Make sure your units match up. This one's ATM, and we've been using MMHG. Temperature, make sure it's in K. Um, again, just use a thermometer. Yeah, be careful with units. Uh, okay, just, um, just make sure you show calculations. Some of you lost points on the last lab because, I, because you didn't show those. So make sure that's there. And then clean up. Uh, since there was acid in those burettes, you have to make sure they're acid free before returning them. Uh, just rinse it out a couple times. So while you're doing your post lab, put pure water in the burette, let it out. Put pure water in there again, let it out. And then bring it to me. We'll test the pH. And if your pH isn't acidic, you're good, and you'll hand it back in. Any other questions?